Imagine the people of Earth as a single sand dune in a vast desert, with the prevailing environmental, political, sociological, economic and cultural conditions, it's in danger of being completely wiped from the face of the universe. Which to me, seems like a colossal waste of effort. We need to plant some metaphorical trees to stabilize that dune. Prior to that, we need to plant the underlying infrastructure with deep roots to give somewhere for that biological matter to accumulate and lock down the metaphorical topsoil. It is a big dream, but we have a short window of time before the probability of a disaster, man-made or not, overtakes us. And that could just snuff us out as a species. It is not possible to make this change using force, or extreme social control, or even a religion. The massed powers of governments and religious organizations and industries have been very careful to ensure that this is an impossibility. There will just be yet more bloodshed, more pollution, and a massive waste of resources. We could treat the current system of human existence like a reptile skin that we just need to shed. Something whose time has come that we do not need and that just sloughs off without harming us. We could replace it with a better humanity, with social equality, peaceful coexistence, and really great free and universal education. Who wouldn't sleep a whole lot better if they, they knew for a fact that everyone on earth had gone to bed, fed, sheltered, educated, clothed and fulfilled? In fact, you could do that straight away if you just spent a fraction of the various countries of the world's military budgets. Such a future is not science fiction. It's science choice, and I'm betting the majority of us would make that choice if it were up to us. What would the people of that society be like? In a word, unstoppable. The closest thing in popular culture to this idealized human race is that found in Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek The Next Generation. They respect each other and have eliminated bigotry and poverty. This means that they have a galaxy full of well-educated people who can direct their efforts towards progress and assisting each other. Their lives are not without strife, but they are more than equipped to overcome problems that they do encounter without worrying about money, shelter, illness, lack of education, drudgery, no companionship, and the list goes on. For the first time in human history, we have the tools to make radical environmental, economic, societal, and political change. And if a large enough group of people can make that, can decide on that change, it's more than possible. It would be nice to believe that we could all hold hands and sing Kumbaya together and agree to all be friends. But I am a pretty cynical old man, and I'm not even a nice person. So it would seem, to me, that we need to build an example, or multiple examples, of a really great way to live. The advantage that the Star Trek universe has over our real one is merely conceptual rather than technological. A member of Starfleet doesn't suddenly stop being in Starfleet if she's not on a starship, or doesn't have a tricorder. And in some ways, the technology we have right now is superior to that envisioned in Star Trek The Next Generation. So if you got the option to join Starfleet, would you? How many people, if it were properly explained, would want to join? What if there were communities all over the world that were accepting of each other and working together to make a better life? If you wanted to join them, you would only need to put aside bigotry and accept that how others live their lives is their business and theirs alone. And as long as that no one's being harmed, they should be left to just do that. And that would mean you'd need to accept people of other genders, beliefs, orientation, country of origin, religion, skin tone, etc. Would you still be in? So what if we were to build a small number of trial communities in different parts of the world? Those communities would need to be self-sufficient, and they'd need to thrive with the goal of becoming culturally self-sufficient. They would need to grow their own food, be a storehouse of human information and culture, and generate their own power if necessary, clean their own sewage, produce sufficient water and shelter. It would have to be a great living standard and produce a small environmental footprint. People living in that community could even have external jobs since the cost of food, water and shelter would pretty much be taken care of. People there could also start experimental businesses so that they as well as the community could earn more income and provide reasonably priced services to the local area. It could also eventually become a mega corporation in its own right, but it would stand out as being ethical and it could outgrow other institutions that oppress people simply through recruitment. If its numbers were great enough, it could be enough of a local majority that people voting under democracy could be directly represented and affect real change. It could also be test beds for alternative technology in agriculture. The technology to do this is already available. The people there first in those early outposts would need to be the most community-minded and competent people you could find, essentially the sort of people you'd pick if you're going to install a small group of colonists on another planet. 
so the Star Trek analogy still seems to be holding up. And I'm pretty sure there are still a lot of people that would volunteer to go live there. Certainly not everyone, but enough could, and those will be quickly seen as having a much better standard of living than those outside, and since this concept is infinitely scalable, once the theory had been proved, the new lifestyle could be rolled out as quickly as there were volunteers to staff new environments. And eventually such a group would be able to offer medical facilities, schools, jobs, reduce power and, and food to those communities local to them, stepping into the gaps often left by governments or other corporations. I personally would be happy to go join such a group, even if it wasn't my idea, and even if I couldn't live there yet. Having it out there and expanding is a whole lot better than not having it at all. As the saying goes, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. So fair enough, you might be thinking, where do we start? Phase one would be to ascertain how many people broadly agree that such an idea is a good one. Can't do a huge amount to quickly change humanity's death plunge with just a few people sitting around. But you can make a noise with a million of them. So the first goal would be to get a group containing a million or more people that generally agree that it would be a worthwhile thing to at least try. Phase two is when we need to call no more than five dollars each so we can find and buy land for the new colonies that would become self-sustaining. So those first, far first ones would essentially need to be farms of some kind or at least capable of becoming small holdings. Then we need to find some colonists and form some kind of effective organizational structure and set up the nuts and bolts. Publicity officers would also need to be found or trained to mesh those grafted on pockets of humanity into the fabric of society. Not least, we would need great accountants so that they could make the finance 100% transparent so that everyone would be able to see where their $5 went and how it had been spent. Now, I have some ideas for how to do all those things, but none of the nitty gritty is anywhere near as important as getting to that first million people. As we get more people together, we'll have more and better ideas. But you've got to flip the pebble before the ripple reaches the end of the lake. The reason I read this out with just my voice and footage from the International Space Station was to remind myself that unless we get our act together as a species, this may be as far away as humanity ever gets from Earth again, if we don't do something reasonably soon. And if you want to know why this channel is called The Culture, then you'll need to watch the next video, which I'm recording and writing at the same time, so you don't have to wait. So who wants to be a space cadet?